So as I was uh, reviewing some things today, it was just laid on my heart, guys, to talk about soul ties and marriages. Soul ties and marriages. It's a very dangerous thing. Soul ties exist. Soul ties are why so many people are still hanging on to people from the past. They may friend zone them, but this is someone that once broke their heart, someone they once slept with, someone they once almost slept with, a person they had a one night stand with or liked and never got any further with that person. And then they keep these people around, okay? That's what you call a soul tie. And if you want to know more about soul ties, you can ensure that you're inside my video, you're inside my window and go into my search engine for my videos and you will see uh, soul ties. I do believe that I have actually created a playlist on soul ties. So there are many people who are married and they have soul ties with other people outside of their marriage. And sometimes they're wondering why they're having problems. Why I can't get along with my spouse? Why am I not connecting with my spouse? Why am I not attracted my, to my spouse? Why am I having conflict with my spouse? A lot of times, it can, there can be many variables, but one of the things to consider is, do you have a soul tie? Is there someone outside of your marriage that you are constantly bringing into your marriage through sharing what's going on, telling this person things about your husband or your wife, uh, someone that you're talking to on a regular basis, someone, it could be someone you have slept with. If it's somebody you have slept with, that's definitely a soul tie. No matter how, no matter if you have never been intimate with this person and you don't talk a certain way, you have a connection to them. This is a person that you have attempted to be in a relationship with, was in a relationship, it failed, they failed you, you failed them, there was heartbreak and pain, yet you are still tied to them. A lot of times, guys, you are still tethered to somebody and it can cause problems. You may not understand that, but you must understand that we are more than just a body. We are spirit. So, and we, we are soul and spirit. We are body, soul, and spirit. And that the soul is the seat of your emotions. So when you sleep with a person or you have had intimacy with that person or you're having, you're having deep conversations with a person, you are being soul tied. If when you have problems, this is the first person you think to call. When you get upset with your husband or your wife, when you leave the house, is this person, do you go to another room and you start to text them? Do you go and shut the door and call this person? Do you go for a drive and when you go for a drive, this is a person you're calling. Your spouse may be calling you when you've left on your drive and you will reject their calls and keep talking to this person. This is a soul tie. And as long as this person is there, as long as this person is your lifeline, as long as this is a person you're going to for everything, to the point that even a message like this will offend you and you, some of you, and you will continue to, to, uh, what's it the word? You defend this relationship and you will say, this is, this is a friend and this is who I have. But anyone that you're going to more than your spouse has taken the place of your spouse. It is a spiritual thing. So if 70% of you is with your spouse, but 30% is with this other person or the percentage is the other way around, you must understand that it's going to cause a wedge because it's a spiritual thing. In the natural, you may think, well, I give my spouse 70% or I give my spouse 80% or 90%. I'm just, it's only 10%. No, it's still a piece of you that's over here. And if you are not whole in spirit, if, not, if a part of you is here and a part of you is there, then you're not whole. And if you're not whole, you're double-minded. And the Bible says a double-minded man, that includes male and female, is unstable in all of their ways. So even a little bit. The Bible also says a little leaven spoils the whole lump. You've got to think about it. If you had 90% good food or 90, let's even go over this, for, this further, 99% 
of your food, a meal that's placed before you, is actually, it's actually good to eat. It's been handled well, but then there's only one percent. Did I say ninety nine percent? Ninety nine percent of this food is clean and and it's safe. But there's only one percent of you know, there's just a small bit of hair in it, or there's just a one percent of that meal, a portion of it has a bug in it on the side, or there's only one percent of poison in this, or one percent of you know, just a little bit of uh, a little bit of bleach fell in it. Would you eat? Would you eat that meal? How many of you? I've never had this. Thank God, but it's I, I imagine it's disgusting. You go to a restaurant, you eat, 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 you get all the way down, and you realize that there's a bug in it. I've seen things like this. So it's the same thing. It's not about, oh, it was just a little bit, it was just a tiny bug, or you just got to this part and realized it's rotten, or you, you got down to this part and realized a part of your food is is raw. You got all this much of your steak was cooked, but uh, you get to this raw part. Is something that affects it, right? If there's a bug inside your blade, inside your meal, you think of everything that bug got cooked in your meal. And you think of the residual effect. You think of how the small thing could have, the, the nasty things in it was cooked in your meal and you ate it. Even if you didn't eat the bug itself, you caught it before you got to it. It was in it. So you begin to think of everything, where this bug came from, and that you possibly consumed its flavors or even though it was masked with all the beautiful, the delicious food, this thing was in your plate. 1% of bleach in your food has an effect even though you never tasted it. So it's the same thing. It seeps in. No matter what portion of yourself you may be thinking, it's no big deal. It has a trickle effect. And so that's why many people cannot enjoy their husband or their wife because there's somebody over here. And if you are a believer in the Lord and you are doing this, you especially, it's one thing someone is not a Christian. And even people who are not Christians, they understand about soul ties. But sometimes they may think, you know, oh, I have control of it. You have no control. You're not even going to have control when your soul leaves your body. So therefore, you will not have control over the connections that takes place. And so that's why you will naturally want to call this person. You're going to go to this person for advice. But ironically, let me tell you something about soul ties. How you know so soul tied between you and that person, someone has to be excluded. So you're going to have loyalty to one person. You may go to this person and tell them a whole lot of things about your spouse. But you know what you're not going to do? You're not going to go to your spouse and tell them a whole lot of things about this person. You will share everything with this person, but you will not share everything with your spouse. You will tell this individual all these things about your husband or your wife. But you're not naturally going to come home to your husband and your wife and share what this man or this woman told, shared with you for that day or what you talked about. Because you have a soul tie and a connection. And with that, that tie, you have more of a loyalty to this person. You're going to have a sense of censorship, not censorship. What am I looking for? Well, it'll be censorship for somebody else with a person on the outside. But there's a sense of loyalty you are going to be protective of the information that they share with you. You're not going to tell anybody else. You're not going to tell your spouse about it. You are basically covering that person. And so you're giving that person what you should be giving to your spouse or your wife or your husband. So sometimes... The reason why you cannot connect to your husband or your wife, the reason why you're noticing everything that's wrong about them, the reason why even when they do something that's not right, you cannot seem to get, you are not able to work it out, is because you're so tired. 
I'm not saying that your spouse may not have done something that may have caused you to not want to be with them, not want to deal with them. They may have done things that really offended you. I'm not negating that. But I'm saying to you, you're not going to be able to look at the situation objectively as long as there's somebody else in the wings that you are sharing with them. It's like, it's almost like if you're having, you know, I used to watch wrestling. So imagine, you know, they will tag team. But imagine your spouse or let's put it like this. There's a person that can tag somebody else in, but the other person, their opponent, the opponent is over there by themselves. And so it's not a fair fight. It's not a fair objective. It, nothing is fair because there's one person in this corner and then there's two over here. So they can get help, they can get assistance, they can tag this other person in, they can be resting up. So the person who's just there by themselves is going to be defeated because it's two against one. So just something to think about. Whatever is going to happen in your marriage or, or not, whatever, whatever offenses there may be, you're not going to be able to deal with that objectively. You're not going to be able to see things the way God wants you to see it as long as you have a soul tie with someone else. And so you may be praying to God for change, but sometimes your prayer is going to be affected because of your soul tie, because of who you're talking to, because of who you have in the wings, and sometimes who you are attracted to, who you have slept with that is now your confidant and your counselor. And I always say, if this person failed in the relationship with you, it didn't work out, how can they be your counselor? How can you be a counselor to someone that you did not even, you were not even able to maintain that relationship? And sometimes that person even has their own husband and wives. You're out of order. You may not believe it, but you're absolutely out of order. If God is going to move in your marriage, in whatever degree, God is not saying, allow, you cannot say, well, they did this and they did that, so this is why I did this. Wrong is wrong is wrong in the eyes of God. And a soul tie is definitely going to be a stumbling block. It's going to change your view. It's going to change your attitude. It closes off your heart. You're going to have a very tainted view of your spouse because you are soul tied to someone else. All right, guys.